G'day guys, welcome back to Subnautica. In the previous episode, we finally built the Mark II depth module for the Seamoth, so that we can essentially go deeper into that cave that we've been exploring near life pod number 19. It is kind of terrifying, but we need a lot of stuff from down there. Uh, and yeah, whatever we can find down there, especially the ruby, uh, we definitely need. So let me just have a look. Yeah, we've got a little bit of ruby, but I think we need like two rubies to be able to essentially make the uh, power cell charger that we also need. Uh, not only that though, but I think we need plenty more of those gel sacks to hopefully get some more aerogel made uh, because we do need that for I guess various things that we're going to have to build from here on out. I might just quickly drop all of the aerogel here and I've got the advanced wiring kit there as well and yeah I've got a few things that I could probably just throw in here rather than you know carrying on my person constantly. Got a bit of water, which is good. Uh, I should be able to use that to keep myself hydrated while we're down there, if we're there for a while. Now, uh, arguably, we could be checking out the prawn suit right now, right this moment, but let's not rush into it, shall we? Let's uh, perhaps maybe go back to life pod number 19 once more, and uh, I think we should continue looking around in that area. Um, I'm still having this issue with my uh, with my colors guys so <laughs> as you can see that's the proposed Degasi habitat over there which uh, should be yellow but it's still coming up as like this very light blue grayish color. Uh, don't know what's up with that actually so I've tried you know multiple times to to fix that by, I mean, I've essentially restarted the computer and, you know, um, or restarted the game, restarted the computer, but hasn't really worked out for us. Uh, I assume that problem is happening for every place that we, um, we activate. Actually, no, it's not happening for everything. So I've just reactivated life pod number 19 there, and uh, it is giving us the yellow marker. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Maybe, maybe it's giving us that color because we've not visited that location before. I don't know. Seems kind of weird to me, but anyway, regardless, uh, I'm just trying to get myself going in the right direction here. And uh, we'll have another peek down that terrifying cave, but it has to be done. Now, uh, we did play around, uh, was it the previous episode or the episode before that? We, uh, used the, uh, stasis rifle on a stalker, and we sort of got to know what it did. And I'm sort of interested in using the stasis rifle against, uh, you know, th those, those bad, like, squid human things. Uh, and to see if we can actually scan one of those things, because if we can learn about it, perhaps maybe, you know, we might know s something about it to, I don't know, counter them somehow, or just the thought. But, uh, it is a bit risky, though, to do that, I would have to say. Oh, there's even more wrecks over here, guys. Um, I don't know if there's anything useful here. Have we been to all of these? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult to tell whether or not you've been to certain wrecks. They, uh, they all seem to sort of look similar to each other. But anyway, um... Oh, God. Right. Bumping into stuff. Um... So we're in sort of the right position. Just do a quick repair here. And I'm gonna gather up the rubies that we can find and I believe there should be yeah 
this stuff here. Shale, outcrops, uh, they could, I think, give us some diamond, if I'm not mistaken. Have I scanned this thing? I have, apparently. Um, there's probably a whole bunch of stuff which I, uh, I haven't read about certain organisms in the PDA, so I'm hoping we'll have a little bit of time this episode to take a, a look. Uh, and yeah, we have switched to the rebreather. It seems to be okay for us to use the rebreather, although I can't be certain that we have reached uh, areas that are contaminated. So yeah, I assume the contamination is gone, actually, so here's hoping that we can actually just like breathe uh, quite long or for quite longer uh, periods of time down here. I'm just sort of having a think about how much of this stuff do I actually need to bring with me. Uh, again, I don't want to overload myself with too many things. And then those uh, blood uh, postule things, uh, they're going to take up a lot of space. So I've got to take that into consideration as well. Oh, and the gel sacks, actually. I haven't seen any more gel sacks. Oh, well, as soon as I say that, there's one just sitting over there. I had an idea, guys, uh, about the gel sacks. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's a thing, or there is such a thing as a grow bed for the, uh, for the outdoors, or for, like, as in, like, uh, underwater. Uh, so... Perhaps, maybe, we could throw those gel sacks in, and maybe we can propagate them. Uh, okay, so this is suitable for interior use only. Huh. I thought we found something... That would let us grow stuff outside. Is that not a thing? Uh, let me just have a quick look. Yeah, it is here. Exterior grow bed. So, two titanium. Suitable for use on land or underwater. So, I will definitely try and experiment with that. Uh, when we get home, because these gel sacks seem to be relatively difficult to try and find. So if we can actually grow them... Oh, well, I, I say they're relatively difficult, and as soon as I say that, a couple more show up. So, look, um, it'll probably still be a good idea for us to grow them anyway, or to see if we can grow them. Um, but yeah, here we are, and we've got... Yeah, I... Uh, I saw that in the previous episode, we've got like 500 meters to work with now uh, to try and, you know, explore this area. So here's hoping that we find a decent amount of goodies. Uh, there's plenty of quartz around here. I don't know if it's really something that we need to pick up because we can easily find quartz I was gonna say on the surface but I mean uh, closer to the surface of the the ocean uh, oh yes that's right there's there's this stuff here the um, uraran uh, urara uranite uraninite uraninite Uh, will carrying this stuff, like, kill us? 
if we don't wear like a radioactive helmet? I'm not sure. I know it is used for like nuclear energy generation, but um, we'll probably sort of come back to that and sort of have a think about whether or not we really need it. I do like the idea of using the bioreactor. I don't know if these things attack us or not. If if their um, land brethren are anything to go by, these things might be um, might be hostile. So I will just take cover here and uh, we'll have a read of it. Blood Crawler, an agile territorial scavenger that moves in packs across the seabed. Closely related to the amphibious cave crawler, but adapted to deep sea conditions. Legs. The greatest difference between the crawlers on 4546B are the four legs which extend more than a meter from the blood crawler's torso, allowing it to move at surprising speeds across the seabed and even to scale walls. Torso. The blood crawler can lower its entire body to bring its mandibles within grasping distance of the carrion on which it feeds, while retaining the maneuverability it requires to avoid its prey. Predators. Um, assessment necessary waste recycler avoid or incapacitate. Um, I mean, we'll try to avoid them as best as possible. Um, there's a lot of this stuff here, but I might just carry like one more, and that should be enough. Welcome aboard, Captain. Uh, until we can sort of figure out how to use it, that is. I wonder if there's any other use other than. Uh, you know, power generation. I guess that's nothing. I uh, haven't seen the hostile teleporter just yet. But it is around, so we do want to be a little bit careful. With plenty of materials here, like big chunks of this material. Hopper, gold. Hmm. Yeah, still don't know how we're going to be able to mine that just yet. Yeah, this place is... kind of creepy. Hang on. Is this stuff quartz or is it gold? I mean, sorry, not gold, um, diamond. It is definitely quartz. Okay, this place is actually a lot bigger than I thought it is. Um, these things kind of look like creep vine. I wonder if they're actually creep vine or not. Maybe they're different. Okay. Oh, right. They're the, uh, the blood root things. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Um, what else do we have down here? Gabe's Feather, which I will have a read about once we do go back into the Seamoth. Uh, about these things. A Deep Shroom. Actually, we have seen a need for Deep Shrooms, haven't we? So I will have a read of that as well. I might gather up like a few of them. Just, you know, preemptively. Um, what's something else there popped up? For scanning. What did I see? This thing? Ew. <laughs> 
fine fish. Let's take a, a quick look at stuff. Uh, deep shroom, a discolored relative of the acid mushroom. Adapted to low light conditions, considerably more acidic than its shallow dwelling cousin, it may have applications in advanced fabrication. Can be processed into hydrochloric acid. Ah, yes, I've seen the need for, or, well, I've seen the acid itself, but I can't remember what we need the uh, acid for, but anyway. Uh, what else did we see? Gabe's Feather, here. Uh, this plant grows almost exclusively in deep waters, where its hand-like leaves have evolved to filter sediment from the environment. It is likely dependent on the excretions of fauna populating the waters above and around it. Then we've seen, yeah, these ghost weeds grows exclusively in deep waters, where its pale pigmentation is visible on the fewest, fewest wavelengths. Huh, interesting. I guess there's a few other things that we have seen here and we haven't really read. Um, a cave-dwelling tuber... tuber? Dotted with luminescent photosensitive eyes. These eyes may in some way direct the twisted growth of the stems themselves, possibly in reaction to other light sources, proximity of cave walls or other environmental conditions. And then the cave bush, a purple luminescent species which grows well on hardy terrain away from sunlight. Okay, most of that stuff doesn't really have any applications though. A writhing weed, well adapted to both shallow waters and cave systems. This plant lives in symbiosis with coral species which forms around the base of the stems. And there's the... Ah oh, yeah, we've seen these guys, which are a bit of a pain. The tiger plant. This plant has adapted to sense fluctuations in the water at up to 15 meters and is capable both of prehensile movements of its tubes as well as the propelling of thorns at speeds of up to 10 meters per second. Although capable of incapacitating smaller herbivores, this plant lacks carnivorous digestive organs. Would be predators caught in its defensive per uh, perimeter serve as a warning to other herbivores not to approach. And then, as they decompose, they serve as fertilizer for the tiger plant. Avoid or incapacitate. Okay, so you can actually, uh, I guess, kill them. I mean, it'd be a little bit difficult, though, because you'd have to get in pretty close with the, uh, the knife. Or the thermo blade, I think it's called now. We are actually getting very close to the proposed Degazi habitat. Just looking around to see if there are any other resources. Uh, and I'm trying to find uh, our, our not so friendly squid man. Oh. Okay. Um, are these guys the same as their shallower water brethren? I think they might be. I could be wrong. Do I have my... I don't have my... Um, my stasis rifle. But I could get it out because uh, I think I've got the... Um, I've got the space for it. me pop that in. Yeah, okay. Just gonna see if it's scannable. Okay, doesn't <laughs> doesn't look like it's scannable. I guess it's the same thing. Uh, is there anything important around here that it's sort of like defending? Because, um, be keen to sort of check on stuff down here. Jeez, what is that? Oh, 
I don't know what was making those sounds, but... Okay, good thing we brought some water. Let's just quickly Vital have a drink. Stabilizing. Man, how deep does this cave go? That's crazy. We are almost at 500 meters now. Um, I don't know how many of these I will need, actually. But if I grab one more, that's going to be the limit of, um, of our carrying capacity, essentially. So, um, let me quickly drop that back in there. And, uh, I will actually grab one. And I think we're going to need to go back at this point, because... Oh, hang on. No. Uh, I should be able to bring one more. Um, so, yeah. Is there anything else worth bringing, though? Yeah. I don't know. I think I'll settle with that. Um, so this is quite a few resources for us. Uh, and hopefully that'll keep us going. But uh, I'm keen on getting myself out of here and maybe playing around with the prawn suit. We are very close to, uh, as I said, the Degasi habitat over there. And um, I don't think it's too difficult for us to get back here, really. Oh, right. Uh, I almost forgot, but we do have sonar, right? So that's kind of cool because we should be able to, like, um, sort of in this darkness see uh, where the caves, you know, lead us to and uh, avoid, you know, smashing into stuff essentially. I mean, we do still have a light, so it's not like it's the end of the world, but still. Oh, there he is. Okay. So let's just make sure that we've got a little bit of distance, but, um, oh, he is chasing us. Right. Um, we have some distance. No, it's still chasing us. Uh, just trying to make my w way back up. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, God. All right. Yep, yep, yep. Um, from our experiences with these things, we have been teleported out of the, um, the Seamoth before, right? So, um, we just need to be very careful if that does happen, right? Because, uh, we just need to make sure that we remain calm and try and find the Seamoth once more. Uh... Okay, we know it's there. Uh, I, I sort of want to just see if I can swap this out. And then now, with the stasis rifle, can I... Can I, um... Capture this thing in place? Because if I can... called a warper. Okay, how appropriate. Uh, let, let, let's get out of here. <laughs> uh, we are going to have a read of it. Um, uh, not right now. Not right now. Okay. It, it doesn't seem to be interested anymore. Let, let's... Oh god. Alright, it's, it's moved. Assuming that's the same one, but uh, anyway, uh, not going to hang around to find out, to be honest. Oh, Jesus. Scared the crap out of me. Um, okay, back home it is. Uh, let's just... I reckon I'll, I'll do this. I'll do yellow for camera three, that way it 
will be a little bit easier for us to remember where it is. Oh, hang on. That proposed Degasi habitat, I think that's maybe the one that we have been to. Yeah, maybe. And the one over there... Wherever it is. There. Is uh, the one that we haven't been to. Um, so maybe I'll mark stuff appropriately here. So... Pose Degasi Habitat. There we go. So that can be in yellow as well. And then the other proposed Degasi Habitat. That one can stay blue. Yeah, strange. Strange color coding issue. Welcome aboard, Captain. Okay, we've got all the things. Um, let me swap out the stasis rifle and we should put all of this stuff away. I assume this stuff doesn't really rot, which is good. Um, I sort of need a little bit more space for more of this stuff. And I'll um, put some of that stuff in there. Uh, I do need to figure out what I need for the charger. So let me just have a look at that once more. Uh, we need a couple of rubies, a couple of titanium, and advanced wiring kit. Which... I think I already have, right? Like the advanced wiring kit. Or did I use that up already? There it is. And titanium. And... Yeah, I've got everything I need. So let's get this built. And yeah, I'm sort of thinking, do I want it right next to all of the batteries? I could do that. But I'd prefer finding like a an actual flat surface that's not too close to anything else. Maybe over here, this is fine. There we go. So, uh, with our power cell charger, we can finally throw this empty power cell in. And hopefully we can fill that up. And, uh, yeah, if we ever need to power the Seamoth uh, with an additional one, we should be able to do that pretty easily. And I should be able to stash all of this other stuff in now. Good. Uh, deep shrooms. Let's throw... Well, I was going to say throw the deep shrooms in here, but I guess I can't really do that. I've got a lot of other stuff. Um, maybe I'll bring these. Fungal sample. I have no idea what that's going to be for. I will throw the deep shrooms in here with the other shroom brethren. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll leave the coral in there. The sulfur I might leave... Uh, I'm just keeping the gel sacks for a second here, guys, because um, potentially uh, I might want to start thinking about how we can uh, grow gel sacks. I'm hoping we can grow gel sacks. I assume we can. Uh, I'm looking for some titanium for lockers. Um, Just double checking to see if there's anything in our duffel bags that uh, that I would want to take. Uh, I need titanium, so I'm just gonna do a quick titanium run. Let's see if we can find a few wrecks here and there. One thing that I always wonder about this game, 
as I'm playing it is, um, I wonder if resources are finite or does the game simply spawn more resources as you need it? Yeah, it'd be interesting if uh, resources are finite. It, it feels like it could be finite. Um, but then, you know, you sort of seem to run into more wrecks, more, you know, um, shale or limestone or sandstone outcrops. This should be enough titanium, I think, to keep us going for a little bit. Uh, and yeah, the only reason why I wanted to do that is because I think it's probably a good idea for us to make some more lockers, to be honest. Um, or we could use the the duffel bags. <laughs> I guess that's also an option. Maybe I should use the duffel bags and uh, stash some materials in there because. Um, Otherwise, we sort of made them for no reason, or sorry, grabbed them for no reason. There's also the two lockers that are still on the outside of the uh, the base as well, so we might be able to look into that. Uh, just as well, we got more titanium because we'll also, I'm assuming, need some titanium to make those grow beds. Yeah, so that should be good. I'm gonna throw sulfur in there and maybe the stalker teeth. I think it makes sense. And um, yeah, we've got metal salvage here. Let's maybe just convert that very quickly to our titanium. And I'm gonna jump out once more and we're gonna see if we can experiment with these grow beds. Oh yes, okay. I'm gonna need some food. Um, so do I do a grow bed? Oh, I don't know. I don't know where is a good... Oh, jeez. Christ! Um, where should I do grow beds? Mm, yeah, I, gu I guess we can do some grow beds down here. Exterior grow beds. Here we go. I don't know. It it could be a little difficult to to see where your grow beds are in all of this red grass sort of biome. So I might place the grow beds uh, where our lockers are and. Yeah, I mean, potentially I could even use the lockers to house some of the stuff that we've Farming grown. Farming alien plants is a proven survival strategy. Craig McGill survived 47 months on a healthy, raw, salad of live tree roaches and stank root. <laughs> live sea roaches, or tree roaches, and stank root. He ate. Sounds disgusting, but I guess if you have to survive, you have to survive, right? Like, I have no idea if this is gonna grow, or do I need, like, I need to... 30 seconds. Okay, yeah, that's, that's what I need to do. And then... Yeah, there we go. Now we've got the mini ones. Alright, cool. Um, let me just breathe. And let's do that again. Great. So we should have plenty of gel sacks once they all grow. Uh, I don't know if we would be able to plant other stuff. Uh, 
with that, I'm sort of thinking... 30 seconds. Maybe the... Acid shrooms? As well? Could be. Or maybe even the coral samples, because... Um, Coral samples seem to always be a bit of a problem for me. Um, we always have to travel a little bit to try and get to coral samples. Vital signs stabilizing. Vital signs stabilizing. Uh, how are we doing for power? Two, sorry, uh, 620 or so. Still got some marble melons in there. I'll throw another marble melon in and maybe like the lantern fruit can go in there. So that should power us for a while, I assume. Uh, I wonder if this is also draining quite a, a lot of power. Could be. Um, maybe that's an argument to go nuclear. I don't know. I just, I just don't like the idea of going nuclear, to be honest, guys. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll shift to nuclear if we really need to. Um, no space. No space for silver ores. Um, anyway. I'm gonna shift gears at this point, and we will be looking at how to make the prawn suit. So, maybe I can tag it here. I know I'll probably need, like, the vehicle bay or something to make it. Let's see, um... Yeah, nuclear reactor. We still need a couple of different pieces anyway. Alien containment, a couple of pieces for that as well. Hmm. Where is it? There, let's tag that. So we need a couple of aerogel, which we have, enameled glass, which... Do we have enameled glass? No, but I think it's not going to be too difficult to make. A couple of diamond, a couple of... I think that's lead. And plasteel. I think the plasteel we probably should work on first. So... Yeah, let's grab all of our titanium. Maybe we might need to even source some more. Uh, let's see how far we can get. Okay, and then we need some lithium to go with that. A couple of lithium. Cool, um, so that's at least one of them, but I'll need more. More titanium. All systems online. So our setup is not too bad at the moment in terms of power, because, um, well, if you think about it, we do generate quite a bit of power with the bioreactor. And we sort of store that during the day. And we sort of accumulate that power during the day. And, oh man, got our uh, metal scraps there. I definitely want.
the power might be draining at night. That's true. But I think it's probably enough power to last us, you know, through each night. Then we start accumulating more power again once daytime comes around. Ooh, look at that. They're already mature. That didn't take long at all. Um, let's park this again. Welcome aboard, Captain. And yeah, let's uh, continue making this plasteel. more lithium from here and we may as well grab the diamond so I need a couple and we'll need to make some glass then that will be also converted into enameled glass right which means I think I just need the one stalker tooth for that so yeah let's give this a go glass enameled glass steel and we just need our arrow gels and then our lead a couple of lead I think yeah there we go so we can make this uh, but I do assume that we'll need to do that at the vehicle a mobile vehicle bay. Let's quickly see if we can find that. Should be up here somewhere. Yep, prawn suit. Here's the Neptune escape rocket as well. So, yeah, we could start construction on the launch platform, but I think maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves here on that front. We'll come back to it, definitely. Uh, but yeah, let's get the it prawn suit. One first, piloting a prawn suit to feel a sense of limitless power. Prawn operators receive weeks of training to counteract this phenomenon. <laughs> you will have to make do with self-discipline. Self-discipline, you say? <laughs> uh, that's going to be hard. Look at this badass thing. I mean, apparently it's powerful enough to like crush asteroids and stuff like that in its hands. So, oh man, just spoiling the fun. But yeah, look at this thing. We are set right now, I reckon. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Captain. Ooh. Okay. It has a, a different computer on board. Unlike the bases and the sea mod. Okay. I don't think this thing can really do too much. Oh! We can punch stuff? Ugh. Get out of here. It's, it seems to be running away. Okay, so... I'm just sort of playing around here, but it seems like we've got like some kind of a booster icon there, or like a energy icon on the right-hand side, which governs maybe how far we can jump. So that's cool. Um, I assume the arms are just to well I guess defend ourselves but also just to break some of those uh, outcrops and stuff the the stones maybe this is what we use to like get some of those bigger resource chunks 
So it'd be good if we can see if we can find more of those. Um, oh my god, I just realized though. This is the game changer. Um, 900 meters, guys. <laughs> That's how deep we can go with this thing. Cool. So we can definitely take this further down into the ocean. So we'll uh, we'll definitely do that. Uh, but I wonder if um, if this actually takes like a power cell. It does have like an energy reading there, like a an amount that is definitely decreasing. Um, okay, yeah, it does. It does take a power cell. Ooh, it takes two power cells, and it has storage as standard. Ah, oh, what? <laughs> that is so cool. All right. Um, can the moon pool dock this thing? I wonder. Um, let's let's play around with it. So if I can just find a parking spot for the sea moth, that'd be great. Let's just leave it there. And yeah, we'll check to see if we can park the uh, the prawn suit in there. I assume that's a thing. Could be wrong. It is a bit difficult to control, though, so we're gonna have to get used to that. Ah, yes. Very cool. Oh, yes, and it has upgrades as well. Maybe we should check on the upgrades for uh, the prawn suit right away. Um, so this comes with two lithium... Uh, sorry, not lithium. I was going to say lithium-ion batteries, but uh, power cells. <laughs> um, I guess I'm going to have to maybe make another power cell if I if I ever want to swap out the batteries pretty quickly. Well, I guess maybe they sort of share the power. Um, anyway, sorry, getting um, distracted here. We have some food. We may as well, since we're here. Alright, um... I do still have a little bit of water. Let's, uh, let's take a look. Uh, where do I make the upgrades from? Not here. Actually, this could be a good thing to have in case we come across something important enough for a beacon to be placed down. Um... Oh yes, that's right, sorry, I, uh, I keep forgetting that uh, upgrades come from here. Wow, okay, you have a depth module for the prawn suit as well, so I assume we can go beyond 900 meters in that case. Um, maybe... I mean, judging by the depth that we can go with the sea moth right now, I reckon this could take us to beyond, like, a thousand meters. So... Thermal reactor recharges power cells in hot areas doesn't stack. Ah. Uh, jump jet upgrade. Powerful rear mounted jets propel the prawn suit into the air. Meaning what? Like as in if I wanted to take this outside of the water, I guess. Maybe it's not really powerful enough to uh, to jump in the air, but it's powerful enough to sort of move us around in the water. Possibly. A torpedo arm. <laughs> that looks kind of cool. Um, but 
yeah, I, I guess we have all of the upgrades, or sorry, all of the materials rather for this, so... Common module. Storage module. Seamoth and prawn compatible, but... Um... We've got one for the Seamoth. The prawn suit already has a storage module though, like, do I really need another one of these? Engine effic- uh, sorry, efficiency module. I would love to have one of those. Hull reinforcement. Eh, okay. Torpedo arm. Have we seen any other types of arms? No. Torpedo arm seems to be the only thing. Um, alright. Well, since we have everything, uh, I think we still have lithium. Aerogel we can easily make now. Titanium. Again. How did this become a problem? Titanium is a limiting factor once more. Uh... Oh, it looks like lithium is also a problem. Oh, actually we do have one lithium. Uh, let me unpin everything. And... Maybe we pin the, um, the upgrade that we want. So pin that. Aerogel. I think we have one aerogel. It's just the titanium that's limiting us being able to make this, so... I mean... I want to play around with this, uh, the, uh... I was about to say sea moth, but... I want to play around with the prawn suit a little bit more, just to get used to controls and stuff. It doesn't move very fast, though. So... I would say that the sea moth is still better in terms of maneuverability. I'm hoping we can find some more scraps and stuff around here. But yeah, let, let's see if we can do the scrap finding with the prawn suit. Yeah, it is definitely harder to control, that's for sure. But being able to explore 900 meters below sea level, that is going to be so awesome. And yeah, because this could be like our... Um, Our uh, refuge, same way that we are treating the sea moth at the moment. It's a little bit more down here. And yeah, since it has so much storage, this is also really, really good for, um, you know, salvaging stuff and trying to find materials and stuff. can be a little janky though to um, get the right angle to actually pick stuff up. There we go. Um, I can't remember if we are running out of quartz now, but I may as well gather up a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, this is sick. Love it. And there's one of these mesmer fish here. Yeah. Run away. Okay, we should have enough titanium now. Um... 
But I could continue exploring. Yeah, see, I mean, our inventory isn't even filling because we're filling the uh, the prawn suits inventory. Um, so maybe it's a decent chance for us to gather up a few other materials we haven't really been gathering. Oh no, I did not want to do that. No. I feel like creep vines, maybe, like if you destroyed a lot of them, it could uh, disappear altogether and you might actually have some trouble not having creep vine around. Welcome aboard, Captain. Alright, so I've got a little bit of creep vine on me, and that's okay. Actually, creep vine clusters, rather. Um, I'm sort of wondering whether or not I can grow my own creep vine. Is that a thing? Because if we can grow creep vine, then um, maybe we should. If we can have like a couple of creep vine clusters, or maybe even just one, um, that would be very, very useful to have close by. No! Don't fall down! Oh, uh, you know what though, guys? Uh, I'm sort of thinking that it may be quite difficult for us to get around um, using the prawn suit knowing that we sort of need uh, some form of land to sort of stand on, right? Because unlike the sea moth, you can't just, uh, you know, uh, let's say hover. <laughs> Hover in the water. Um, I think I think that makes sense. Hovering in the water. I'm just sort of having a look at the lights on this thing, but I wonder if the the lights could be a little bit brighter. Uh, anyway, let's head home. Uh, we'll get this upgrade and see, I'm sort of curious about the the jetpack upgrade. Um, I'm sort of thinking, if we did that upgrade, I wonder if we could move a little faster using it. Um, because if that helps us move around a little bit more in the water as well, then maybe it's worthwhile. Welcome aboard, Captain. Okay, so... Gonna wanna just grab stuff from here. And yeah, we're gonna have to sort of shift a few things around. Actually, while um, I've still got that train of thought, I will see if I can use this to grow that creek vine, and we'll see what happens. I assume it might grow, but could be completely wrong. Okay guys, sorry about that small cut right there. I uh, didn't realize that I was running so low on disk space, apparently. <laughs> Rookie mistake, I know. Uh, but yeah, it happened. Uh, so, where were we? We were about to get some more titanium and uh, just make this torpedo arm. So let's just quickly do that and play around with it but um, I'm just sort of looking at the timing of this episode I think we might play around with the arm in the next episode um, for the time being though uh, we'll at the very least make the upgrade and chuck it in so let's do that yeah it's really unfortunate with the timing of that cut because uh, we're very very close to the end of the episode but anyway that's fine right, so let's Chuck that in. We could go double torpedo, uh, torpedo, torpedo arms. 
if we really wanted to. But I think it's still probably important to have like one free arm to smash stuff and um, you know pick things up as well. So good progress I would say this episode. I'm really happy we've got the prawn suit. Um, we can go 900 meters deep into the sea. So we'll definitely play around in the next episode and see if we can get ourselves to the cave again with all of the scary creatures. And perhaps maybe we can go even deeper um, in that cave. I don't know how far the cave goes, to be honest, but there's still the Degasi or the proposed Degasi habitat, right? So maybe we can take the prawn suit there. Anyway, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode, chuck us a like down below, subscribe if you want to see more, stay true, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.